How fast can someone get around the world now? According to Via Travelers, it would take you around 415 hours to drive the 24,900 miles around the circumference of the Earth if you could drive a car around the Earth. How fast can a plane get around the world? According to Simple Flying, it completed the fastest circumnavigation in 31 hours 27 minutes and 49 seconds, beating its own record by over an hour. You can now fly around the world in 31 hours and 27 minutes. That's insane. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Around the World in 80 Days. Around the World in 80 Days is a 2004 theatrical release. It is directed by Frank Caracci, cinematography by Phil McHugh, editing by Tom Lewis, music by Trevor Jones and David A. Stewart, and it's written by David Tit N. Titchener, David Benullo, and David Andrew Goldstein. I'm not making that up. And it's based off a book of the same name by Jules Verne. Shall we compare? Phileas Fogg is a wealthy man who lives modestly in London who fires his valet for bringing him shaving water slightly off temperature. He then hires a new valet, Jean Passepartout. After an article claims the new railway could get people across the world in 80 days, Phileas claims he could do it without the railway and makes a wager to do so. Passepartout and Fogg set out and must be back on December 21st, 80 days later. They disembark Egypt and Fogg is mistaken for a criminal. They get to Bombay two days early. In Calcutta, they hire an elephant to take them to Allahabad. They decide to rescue a woman undergoing Sati involuntarily. They make it to Hong Kong, are arrested, but then make bail. An officer from London named Fix drugs Passepartout to keep him from telling Fogg his true identity. Fogg misses his connection, so they take a small boat to Shanghai to catch a steamer to Yokohama. Reunited, the four travel to San Francisco, where they hop on a train to New York with many delays. He finds a boat to take him to Bordeaux, France, but bribes the crew to mutiny and take them to Liverpool. The boat runs out of fuel and they burn wooden parts to keep it going. They arrive in Ireland, where they take a train to Dublin, where they take a ferry to Liverpool, where they're gonna make it just in time, but Fogg is arrested. Fogg is exonerated when the real thief shows up. They make Make it back, but five minutes late. Fogg and Ayuda decide to be married. Passport 2 finds out they made a mistake with their days and they did in fact make it back in time. Fogg wins the wager and splits the money between the three of them. The end. You aren't even ready for how different this movie is from the freaking book, dude. No, it's bare bones. They're traveling the world in 80 days based on a wager. That's it. Nothing else is the same. It's stupid. The film stars Jackie Chan as Passepartout or Lao Sheng, Steve Coogan as Phileas Fogg, and Cecile de France as Monique LaRoche. Warner Brothers was going to make an adaptation of this book um, and an adaptation of the 1956 movies with Steven Summers to direct and Brendan Fraser to star. <laughs> but then 20th Century Fox was going to adapt it as well. Jackie Chan was announced to be playing Passepartout in 2002. Paramount Pictures had signed on to distribute, but then dropped it because they were considered about the high budget and non -bankab low bankability of the cast. Rude. And then before Disney signed on for distribution rights, this was the highest budgeted film to not have um, a distributor signed on. It has a 32% on Rotten Tomatoes. It had a $110 million budget and made $72.2 million in the box office, which is so bad. Ebert said that it was visually nice and goofy fun. The consensus is that this is the most expensive box office flop of the time. This was shot well. I kind of expected more, especially when we've had something now like Pirates of the Caribbean, where it was just so visually stunning. Even without the effects, it was visually stunning. Every frame was a painting. And this was, I mean, the, the cinematography for this was fine. I think obviously because they had Jackie Chan, they were much more focused on stunts and stuff like that, which is fine, I guess, but this could, with a $110 million budget, there should have been visually. It definitely moves pretty quickly, and I feel like you're moving around the world pretty fast. I was a little concerned, because like when it started doing like the day one, I was like, oh my god, are we going to see every day? Ugh. But we don't, which was a good call. Um, 
And I, I mean, for it, I guess I can say it is well edited. It does move along. However, I do have a problem with how quickly we get the Jade Buddha back to China because that felt very much like it was going to be the whole point of the movie. And then it's like, they get the Jade Buddha back to China, they fight about that, and then they just like need to finish the world. And so it was a little weird, but that's fine. Um, editing speaking though, it was pretty fine. This is nothing like the book. First of all, in this, Phileas Fogg is an inventor and an outcast inventor. Yeah, he has money, fine. But he is an outcast inventor who wants to be a member of the science thing. I don't remember what it's called. Academy of some sort. Um, and it, nothing like the Phileas Fogg in the book that I can tell. And then in the book, it seems that Passepartout is his real name and he is truly just like a valet. In this, they give Jackie Chan's character Lao Xing a whole backstory about like trying to rescue the Jade Buddha for his, uh, village and he like he sees someone with a passport and says his name is passport too which was stupid and then um so much else is not like the book then fog being mistaken for a criminal is kind of there but passport two is a criminal because he stole the jade buddha from the bank of england but they stole it from him so like Whatever. Other things that I did absolutely not vibe with with this were the amount of gay jokes in this movie. There were so many jokes that were supposed to be funny, like that were gay. It was, you know, many jokes about like Fog and women's clothing and many jokes about Passepartout and Fog. And like all these jokes that were supposed to be funny at a gay person's expense and they did not land. <laughs> I was like, what's the, like the amount of times they made jokes about Fogg wearing women's clothing when he wore women's clothing one time in the movie to like disguise themselves to get out of somewhere when all three of them wore women's clothing. So like Passport 2 also wore women's clothing, but they just kept focusing on Fogg and I don't, it, I don't understand. I don't like, also, just at the bare bones of it, women's clothing? Like, I think we're past the whole gendered clothing thing. I think we're past that. I think it, wear what you want to wear, regardless of the clothing item. It is not gendered. Um, clothing and toys and the like cannot be gendered. I don't understand that. Um, or gender affiliate, I suppose. Like, obviously you can have a doll that is a girl or a doll that's a boy or a doll that is non-binary or whatever else. But cis men can absolutely wear skirts like i don't understand anyway you understand what i'm saying there were so many jokes like that that i was like what, are, what? i don't understand like i know that my middle school and early high school days that's when that was very popular to make jokes like that so i know it was at that time, but like, ooh, these did not age well or land or anything. I've never seen this movie, by the way. I had never seen it. I know my stepbrother really liked this movie because we we liked Jackie Chan's, so like we liked Rush Hour and we liked um the high the high noon movie, the ones he did with Owen Wilson. That who is in this? Luke and Owen are in this one, which I had no idea. That was fun. But so we liked Rush Hour, like you know, we liked Jackie Chan, you know fight movies we thought they were fun um so my stepbrother i think really loved this movie but i had never seen it i had no interest and uh i'm kind of glad <laughs> it, it, the, there's just so much humor in this that just is a waste because they went way too like slapstick stupid with it we're like this could have been like a nice little heart story moment with some like genuinely good humor like the scene with the statue was so funny. Like, I don't know why the scene with the statue made me laugh so much, but it did. But then other, and like any time that Jackie Chan uses the most obscure thing in the room to fight with is always entertaining. Like when he grabs a freaking bench and is like swinging it around his head and stuff, like that's cool, that's funny. 
Um, but there was some stuff that like wasn't funny when like the sneeze happened and the dude's legs came out of the Statue of Liberty's nose. Like, okay, ha ha boogers. Um, and then like the gay jokes and there was just so much that just is not tasteful. <laughs> like I don't, not that humor has to be, ta you know what I mean. You know what I mean? The effects in this could have been way better, especially after a movie like Pirates of the Caribbean that did have a higher budget, but this had a $110 million budget. The effects could have been infinitely better than they were. Um, some of the green screen stuff was not it. The scene at the very beginning where Jackie is on that like contraption to go 50 miles an hour or whatever else, and he like flies across the town, really set the tone for the movie, <laughs> actually. I think if you just showed someone that scene and were like, are you interested? And they said no, don't let them watch the rest of the movie, honestly. Because it set the tone very well. Then, uh, when they're taking the hot air balloon in Paris and Jackie Chan's Laoshing steals the bag back, the lady had put her purse in it, so she keeps like following a hot air balloon with like, my bag, my bag, my bag. And finally they realized she had put her bag in that bag, so they did steal her bag. Um, but while she's following, she like <laughs> drops down this thing and then face plants onto the ground. And this woman is easily 70 something years old. And it was so abrupt and so unexpected. It took me out. And then I also was like, what is this? What was the point of that? Like, that was funny, but also what the heck? And then they throw her bag down to her. And it's like, oh my God, dude, like it was so unreal. Then another thing I didn't expect, there were a lot of like star cameos in this. I mentioned Luke and Owen Wilson, but Arnold Schwarzenegger's in this movie, which I had no idea. <laughs> And so when that was revealed, I literally was like, Arnold Schwarzenegger! Like I said it out loud, like, what is happening in this movie? And then he's like, supposed to be some Turkish prince. And he wants uh, LaRoche to be his seventh wife. And it's just the most bizarre scene. <laughs> I don't understand, but it was so hysterical to see Arnold Schwarzenegger, even though it was a little bit icky, because they, it was a little bit icky. It was icky, but it was insane to me that Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the movie. Um, otherwise, this is insane. This Honestly, this movie is just all over the place. It, I think it tackled a lot of stuff, and it could have been better if they just reined it in a little bit because I think they were trying really, really hard to be a comedy, like a slapstick, uh, physical, super comedy. But then we're also trying to like tie in all these other things and it just was too much. And they should have like really narrowed it down and fine tuned it. And I feel like they didn't. Um, and the, the toxic masculinity and gay jokes were just like, you can't ignore them. They're everywhere and it was really uncomfortable. That's it. That's all I have uh, for Around the World in 80 Days. My uh, final rating is five hot air balloons out of 10. Our total movie count is Parents That's Hall and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to, oh wait. Oh wait, Phileas says he's the only one of his family left. Ooh, should I count that? He doesn't say my parents died, but he says I'm the only one of my family left. I think I might count that. Our parent that's all is. <laughs> Cry count is still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. I have a tier starting at just $1 where you get every video a week early and a coupon code to merch. Uh, and buy merch. Merch is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are. So you do you, and don't be the uh, warlord lady. Or the leader of the science place. They both were terrible. Tom Lewis, Trevor Jones, David A. Stewart, David N. Titcher, David Benoit, <laughs> David Andrew Goldstein. This is a joke. What the heck?